one of the crew threw the question out there. Is that like pineapple on your pizza? How do you feel about pineapple on I pizza? I knew it. <laughs> it's delicious. But when I tell them that, it's delicious. it sparks off something of a mutiny. The two louder crew members start I hate laughing. people like that. It's so annoying, bro. Ship. Ew, you like, you like pineapple on your pizza? Ew, dude. Oh, dude, that's nasty, dude. Why you eat that, dude? Like, chill out, bro. <laughs> consistent youtuber and as you can see your boy feeling good because welcome back to scary movie night baby all right so tonight i got five different animations that we are going to be watching from five different content creators okay but before we get started you already know your boy gotta go down the rules rule number one make sure you got your snacks on deck ready to go your boy got some water along with that rice krispie treat now this is the oreo kind you, you don't even know about this you want some you want some you want some Rule number two, make sure you got your headphones and or volume turned all the way up so your boy ain't gotta get scared by himself, all right? So if you're ready, let's go. You're jealous, aren't you? All right, my beautiful people. Now this first animation comes from Kale Art or Kayla Art, Kayla Art. I'm not sure how you say your name. I'm sorry for butchering it. But this one is called Horror Story Animated. I drove through a town full of fake people. Now let's get it. Let's see what's up. Let's see what's up. What you got for us, Kayla Art? Kayla Art? I'm sorry. I'm I had your just name. left my mother's house after visiting. Turn that. You see, look, I'm already tripping. My, my volume ain't all the way up. stayed over for me. Hold up, it's not turning up. I don't up? visit as often as I should. There we go. I try to make it out there when I do get a chance. I had left my mother's a little after 4 p.m. and for the first hour or so, I was met with an outrageous amount of congestion. Dunkin' Donuts. I think okay. I ended up sitting McDonald's? on the highway without moving. Ah, leave, bro. You got hella straight. sponsors. My GPS came to life, informing me of a severe accident further down the road. Although I wasn't surprised, I was grateful to have something to blame on this bad traffic. You must live in Cali, or ATL. As my car crept further down the road, my GPS, with her overly chipper voice, suggested that I take a detour. At that point, anything was better than sitting in this metaphorical hell. <clears throat> Eventually, I made it. My GPS began to plot a new route home as I drove along the side road. Around 10 minutes later, I found myself driving alongside farmland for as far as is the Is he on the left side of the road? Or is this a one way? I was still a little frustrated at sitting in traffic. Being able to drive consistently with a relaxing view did help calm me down a bit. A few minutes later, my gas light appeared. And I sighed as this just seemed to add on to my many driving frustrations. I was pulling up to an intersection when I saw a sign a for Mazda? a town to my right. Running out of options, I made my way down the road. Hum humbug, humbug town. When I first pulled into town, I was surprised humbug? at Who how says barren that? it was. There was a small gas station on the edge of town, a post office nearby, Come and buy a few gas. residential houses further down the road. Putting the thought to the back of my mind once again, I pulled into the gas station as the sun was beginning to set. After getting out of my car, I saw that the pump had a please pay inside sign taped a small to town. it. When I stepped through the doors, I locked eyes with the man behind the counter. I gave him a nod as I walked over to the cooler. Why's he keep going black? Water. I walked up to the counter and set my water down and asked him to put 20 on the pump outside. He just stared at me for a moment with a grin that seemed forced. He's fake, he bro. Look how shiny he is. Oh. Pressed a few buttons on the register then returned to his previously motionless demeanor. I asked him how much it was for the water, but the man didn't acknowledge me at all. Take it and go then! Feeling too tired to deal with all of this. Golly, bro, all these product placements. The okay, Kayla, all right, get your money car. up. Get your As funds I was up. pulling up my car, I noticed something even stranger than the gas station clerk. There was a woman standing in the middle of the street. Okay. Okay. I watched her until my tank was topped off. Exactly. Good job. What Good the job. Hell she was doing. As I approached her, I asked her if she was doing all right. 
Why are you Which even talking to her? Replied, oh yes. We are happy here. At this point, I was ready to leave, and not just because my gas tank was full. As I drove through the town, more and more things stuck out at me. Okay. The post office nearby had four people standing outside of its doors. Though I have a friend who works missing. at the There's post a office, sign. and they don't stay open very late at all. So either this was a unique post office, or those people were waiting to get inside a closed building. What about the missing sign, bro? I you gonna say nothing about that? The house is next. One house had a man raking his front lawn. Ain't no leaves. Normal enough. Although there wasn't a single leaf. That's what I'm saying. What are you raking, buddy? Across the street from him was a house that had a small seesaw in the front yard, with two children playing on it. All these houses. Except, triple O four. They were both sitting on it evenly, staring at each other, not going up and down. Look who's looking out the window! I started to pick up my pace as I wanted more and more to get out of this strange town. But I soon regretted that decision as flashing lights filled my rearview mirror. They got I cops too? To over to the side of oh the man. Oh he brother. He walked up to my window and stood there. Look how shiny he is, bro. And how much lotion you put on? Wait for instructions from the officer. I rolled down the window and asked if there was a problem. You have the right to remain silent. I gave him a confused look and asked <laughs> if I was under arrest. Okay. Which he spoke again. It's illegal to drive a car, sir. He then leaned down and almost stuck his head inside my car window before saying, Have a nice day. Taking a moment to compose Bro, myself, what? I looked around and noticed that all the people were now staring at Press me. Press on the gas, brother. The man raking his leafless yard. The two children. Everyone was staring at my car now. Press on the gas, bro. I love this animation the one style. That was it's dope. In the middle of the street near the gas station. Reminds me of um. Well, she was still in the street. Steven Universe. But right in front of me now. Okay. In a deep, gravelly voice. Look that at her hand. Didn't belong to her. She said. Join us. Oh, thank you. That's I what I'm talking about. My foot on the gas pedal that hard before in my life. So did I jump immediately on the road, and I didn't let off until I started to see the cornfields once again. Once I was back on the highway, a tidal wave of relief washed over me. I didn't get off the highway until I was finally home. When I made it home, I couldn't stop thinking about all those weird people. Toshiba. Golly. Oh, they all looked it's like people, money. but they didn't act like people. But it is Martin Luther King I on a picture right there. Sound confusing to all of Why you got a picture of a black man? You know what? Me. That could be his dad, I'm bro. Not I don't know his life. Sure who they are, or even what they are. But I think next year, I'll just send my mom a card for her birthday instead. Fly. Why not just fly to see your mom? It'd have been way faster, bro. Golly, that's a mess. You gonna send your mom a car for your birthday? It's worst song ever. Alright, gang. Now this next video is called "True Pizza Delivery Horror Stories Animated," and it comes from the OG Llama Arts. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what's up with it. Six minutes, thirty-one seconds. Let's get it. True Pizza Delivery Story Horror Stories Three. It's the third installment. Okay. A little series. We jumping in at the end. It's all good. I was out doing a delivery one late night. It was probably the longest drive I'd have ever taken for a pizza delivery. Okay. From the pizza place I worked at, it was a 20 minute drive, which isn't too crazy out where I live. Plus, they ordered Mario's four pizza. large pies, so I figured it was a party and I would get a much bigger tip. I about to say, it must be a party. Navigating the dirt roads at night was always annoying, though. Where you live at, Montana? I pulled up to the given address. This man got flames on his car. sketchy looking building, literally in the middle of a forest clearing. There were no cars parked anywhere, or any lights on. I put my car in park and called my boss. I asked him to reread the address at least three times to make sure I typed it in right, but that checked out. I could tell he was in a really bitchy mood and he told me to at least knock on the door and check it out. Get out, bro! He would normally get mad if we took back one pie, 
but I was afraid of what he would do if I brought back four. I was insanely unnerved, but got out anyway. Listen, bro, this is why you gotta care about yourself more than your job, bro. There was no doorbell. You are replaceable. So I just knocked really hard. Got scratches on the nothing, doors? And didn't really expect to hear anything. I was extremely disappointed. Not because nobody answered the door, but because I was realizing that it was all a waste of time and gas. I knocked one more time out of desperation. Mario's Pizza! And then began to hear some kind of rustling noises from inside of the building. Rustling, bro. That's, that's, those are footsteps, brother. I knocked again and yelled that I was the pizza guy. There was silence now. I felt a bit more uncomfortable now than before. But before I could turn around, I noticed something at the window. There was someone looking through the window. Let me see. I couldn't tell oh, if it was a man or a woman. All I noticed were their eyes. Their eyes were open wider than I knew possible. Hey, bro, Mario's Pizza, come get this. At me. I was disturbed enough by this and dropped the pizzas and ran back to my car. The shitty thing wouldn't start until turning the key for the third time. I would have threw I the pizza at the, the window. And back onto the like, eat, bro. But I felt the car rocking about, shaking and bumping. Something wasn't right. I didn't make it far from the building before I started hearing a sharp scraping sound coming from outside. Ooh. There was so much resistance that I couldn't even drive. The car came to a stop. Oh, brother. I got out of the car to check what the hell was wrong. A chill ran up my spine as I began to feel like my heart was constantly skipping beats. What my happened, bro? My tires had been slashed. Ooh. had completely fallen off the rim. Ooh. Not just the front, though. All four tires were slashed. Where you live at, bro? I realized somebody did this when I was knocking on the door to that building. Instead of running, I got back in the car and locked the doors. So they got four tires so and four pieces off building, of you, bro? I could practically see it from where I was if Shame. it weren't for the trees blocking the view. I dialed 911 and explained everything to the operator. She told me the cops would be over as soon as possible and that I need to stay hidden. I'm going back to the house, I asked bro. her if it was advisable to stay in the car or run, and she told me it would be best to stay in the car with the door locked. She asked me to stay on the line with her until the cops arrived. But you wish you had My whole windows. body was shaking. In all directions, there was nothing but dark, seemingly endless forest. I knew it would take forever for the cops to get there. I was not comfortable with sitting in that car so close to whoever did this. The next part, though, is what utterly destroyed me. Jump scare your it window? Still shakes me to this day, and I hope nobody ever has to experience this kind of fear. What's up? As I was scanning all the windows, making sure nobody was outside, I looked in the rearview mirror, and there was the same person. The same person I saw at that window. Okay, you outside now. What's up? Open wider than ever. I could see now that. It was a woman, and I could ever so slightly see a smile begin to spread across her face. Bro, get out the car! I opened my door and full on sprinted into the woods, oh not caring how much noise I made. <laughs> I ran until I was out of breath. Which Bro, did you not see how small and how skinny she was? On the ground. You gonna trip? I tried to cover my loud breathing with my hands as I waited and waited for what felt like hours until I finally heard sirens in the distance. This dude, bro. I gathered up all the stamina I had left to run all the way back in the direction of the dirt road. Your car gone? Eventually, the glowing red and blue lights came into view, and I had never felt better in my life. They were parked in front of my car, investigating with flashlights. I came out yelling at them like a lunatic to help me. I fell to the floor and started to gag, almost throwing up from running so much. They picked me up and began to question me, to which I explained everything to the best of my ability. One of the two cars drove over to the building, and the two officers began to search the building. They two drop kicks to the chest should have been done, a couple bro. of spiky objects. <clears throat> These objects were exactly the same as the ones used to slash my tires. The cops guessed that it was some kind of sick, demented couple, being that I saw the woman. 
but unfortunately they were never found, and that still kills me to this day. I obviously quit my job right after that and started working at a local grocery store. Oh, brother. I know that I'll never forget seeing that woman at the back of my car. Princess Flakes. Army Pops. Oh, there she go, brother. There she go. But if that were me, bro, I would have just drop kicked her in the chat. You see how small she was? Hey, would have rolled right off her shoulders. I would have yank. Uh, you know, whatever. Okay, gang, now this next video is called Yokai Bob the Builder by none other than Meat King. It's actually their latest video they just posted today. So uh, that's kind of cool. We get to watch an exclusive here. Not really exclusive because everybody's seen it. But yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and watch this. Four minutes, 33 seconds. I think it's the shortest video of all of them that we're going to watch today. Pretty sure. We got two more after this. Ugh, what's up? Ugh. I'm not going to lie. Dude's animation skills are... Nah. あ、ま、もりまだ直さないの。やるよ。やるよ。だけど最初にこの餃子だけ食べさせて。あれじゃ、プリン。あ、止めてば。わかってるよ。でも君が美味しいご飯を作ってくれたから。フリーマン。どう
どうかどうかどうか愛おしの兄と同じ運命を僕に与えてくれ You don't even know she's dead though You just assume it Damn, that's clean. I like that, bro. I like that a lot. Hey, yo, that's that's like a life lesson right there. Hey, hey, yo, men's and women's, everybody of any gender or whatever. If you ain't taking care of your home, bro, you okay, Bob? You okay, Bob? It's gonna come through, fix it up for you, and take your beloved person. So, uh, get it together, man. Get get it together. I know daddy issues that I won't even bother. She said, kill a cat like I'm Luca Magnata. All right, my people, now this next one is actually three true disturbing horror stories anime. So it's three videos in one, but it's only nine minutes and 23 seconds, and it comes from Wan C Entertainment. So let's go ahead and see what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Three for the price of one. It got cool for only nine minutes. You know a year ago, I moved into another town. What did I say? True boxing story? The town was very small and isolated and had a small population. This dude sounds like he could be on a nature I started going to a small boxing gym, and only a few guests used that gym as well. Okay. Whenever I go to the gym, I could see there were about one or two people. The gym was barely managed and used to smell something weird, like someone's sweat. I learned almost nothing from there for two months. <laughs> I no coaches there. The instructor was not always there, and I just go to the empty gym and work out by myself every time. That's not really that good. Still, I had no choice but to go there since it was the only gym in the neighborhood. In addition, it was good to use as much exercise equipment Bro, as you possible. jumping? You ain't going to build Another up nothing. Another was that there were quite a few punching bags in the gym, which were much softer and more elastic than ordinary ones. Oh, gosh. There's it bodies in there. It seemed to be a kind of luxury punching bag. The instructor always looked at me with a cold eye whenever he meets me, but it didn't matter anyway. All I have to do is just exercise at the gym. Then one day, something happened. Suddenly, the cops came into the gym and started asking the instructor lots of things. It is said that people were constantly missing in this small town. After concluding that the criminal was in the neighborhood, the cops started to look for him, but they were unable to catch him. It was a little creepy for no reason. Well, I'm a strong dude. Thinking like that, I just shook it off. After that, the time has passed. One day, I came out to exercise as usual, then found police cars parked in front of the gym. As I got closer, I couldn't help but be shocked. They're in the body bags. The instructor was being arrested. Oh. The cops blocked me from entering the gym, but I could literally see it. I'm about to say, I how you gonna see go in those there? things through the narrow view. It was the bodies that I told you, bro. out of the punching bag by the police. The punching bags in the gym contain the bodies of the missing person. The police investigation revealed that the instructor had killed a total of six people in the town and kept the bodies in a punching bag to create an alibi to avoid the police. I started to panic after the police interrogation and immediately came up with something. I mean, the feel of the punching bag. <laughs> I threw up right away. After that day, I've been suffering trauma and eventually quit boxing and moved to another place. Mm. However, even now, I can't forget the weird stench of the gym. The smells that I thought were just sweat. Bro, you know the difference between sweat and freaking decaying skin, right? This Man, happened to me totally when I was different. 16 years old. I, I never imagined anything killed. like this literally had happened to me. I was in the local library searching for some science fiction or fantasy books since they were my favorite genres of anything. While I was searching the books, I came across this older man who looked like he was I'm in about his to poke him in his eye, bro. He appeared to be one of the employees, so I asked him where the SF books were, and he said they are in a section which he had pointed to. After I thanked him, then I went over to the area where he pointed at me and eventually found a Star Wars book. 
being excited, I went to the front desk to rent it and then walked home, which took just a 15 minute. Just about 10 minutes walking, minutes. I looked behind me for no reason and saw a black van kept following me. This made me really uncomfortable. I know that I've always been suspicious of vans, but this specific one that was following me looked just like it had been burned more than five times. The van soon caught up to me, and that was a hair-raising experience. When the driver rolled down his window, to my surprise, it was the same old man from the oh, library. crazy old man, bro. What's I up, Pops? I asked him why he was following me, and he answered by saying he just wanted to make sure I got home safely. That's when you got to know he was lying. Jet. Without any Jet, choice, bro. I bolted all there the way you go. home. That's what I'm talking about. about. Yes, sir. No, you weren't supposed to no run No matter how home. close the place is, just drive wherever you go. They told me like this, and I thought it was over. You weren't However, supposed to run. what really makes this story scary was when I was playing video games in my room after that night. Oh, while brother. I was focusing on the games, I heard a knock at the window beside me. And guess who was there? It was the freaking Pops. same guy from the library. Golly. However, only this time, I could definitely see him holding a 44 Magnum in his hand. Oh, Lord. I don't know where that courage came from. With anger, I quickly ran toward the window, opened it, and punched off that insane- I saw him! Yeah! Yo! ...to the ground of our backyard. Yeah! Okay! As my room was on the second floor, I ran down to my parents in their room to tell them what just happened. My mom called the police immediately. Ah, uh, that's what I'm talking about. 10 minutes. They found him hiding in a bush in our backyard, and he was arrested right on the spot. Yes, sir. We soon found out that he didn't work at the library, and even had many records of homicides, kidnapping, rape, and many other crimes. Okay. So if he feeling. raised his gun on time when I ran to the window, I probably would have been another one of the victims killed by him. But you got them lightning quick hands, so he can he can he can he can fire the gun fast enough. Yes, sir. Met a weird this girl happened on the, in late September the street. when I was walking with my dog, Bubba. Bubba. First, I'd like to mention that Bubba is a small Chihuahua mix and weighs about 12 pounds. Excuse me. I'm also a small woman myself. I live in a relatively safe area in California, so I wasn't too worried about walking my dog at night. Okay. About a week ago, I was on my way home with Bubba, and I noticed that he seemed visibly upset about something. Although it was pretty dark, the streetlights provided enough light so I could see what the reason was. Oh, snap. In the distance, a young girl who looked to be around 13 years old was walking toward us. She was dressed in what looked to be a school uniform oh, and also wore black and white striped knee-high stockings and black no Mary Jane shoes. And I could see that she was shorter than me. Bubba Although was I have more aggressive, barking I seen anyone and like growling. That in forever. It's been Since a long he time. has never acted like this before, this made me feel like there was something off about this girl. I looked closer, she got a and phone that's in her hand. when I noticed her unusual posture. She appeared to be limping with her head down, and it occasionally twitched every five seconds or so. But y'all already her know what I'm doing. Hand was in her pocket. And Drop it looked kick. like she was holding something. Straight to the chest. I now She's got a mask on. She had long, greasy oh. black hair COVID, and bangs corona. that covered I, I her eyes. However, I couldn't see her face at all since she was wearing a mask that covered her nose and mouth, and that really creeped me out. Bubba kept on barking. Watch out, bro. She just got COVID. Go to the other the side of the street. street. When we were about five feet apart, I could finally see what was in her hand. It was a flip phone. As I passed by her, then I could see one bloodshot eye peeking at me through those disgusting bangs. Ma! I started to pick up my pace. Me, ma! You know what I'm saying? In my horror, she me, turned ma, ma, ma! around you know and started saying? to follow me. Being horrified, Bubba. I was trying not to cry, and Bubba was pulling Get him. on his leash, still Let smiling and baring his teeth. Just then, I heard the girl singing Knife. from behind me. Knife. Told you. Yeah, I found her. What should I do next? That's when I picked up Bubba and started running home. But if you don't throw Bubba when at her, back, she what a distraction. Still walking peacefully with the phone up to her ear and staring at me. I didn't have any choice, just kept running. And I couldn't stop crying, although I finally got home. 
After that, that I told my mom about what oh, happened, but she was convinced it was just a Halloween prank, so we never ended up calling the police. Fortunately, I never saw her again, and I definitely never take walks at night. Okay. All right, wanna see? All right. Every fucking winner on one. Fuck a scene, fuck a clip, bitch, I'm on one. Fuck a stream. All right, gang, now our last video of tonight. It is called Two True Online Gaming Horror Stories Animated, and it comes from MJV Animations, all right? 14 minutes and 49 seconds, the last video of tonight. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's go. Online gaming story. You know, since we're a gaming channel, we had to end it with some gaming, you know what I'm saying? We had to, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? See at these. Game's trash. It's already a terrible story. Narrator, narrator. Let's read. Being a girl who plays video games can be pretty tough sometimes. Okay. Note that I said girl who plays video games and not bloody gamer girl, since that term seems to be now irrevocably associated with dirty bathwater and a twitch thought turned scam artist. Okay. That's just one of the things you get. Others just assume you're trash at the game because of what's between your legs. But bro, hold on, get... hold on, hold on. Real talk real quick, real talk. We're gonna get right back into it in a second. Those girls that do that on Twitch and stuff, the ones that are doing the bath butter, the, the hot tub streams, uh, there's even girls out here farting in the mic. Like, listen, bro. Are they really in the wrong, though? Are they doing anything wrong, bro? Like, for real, we really, we really, really sit here and talk, think about it. The people that are being freaking drawn in, these freaking dudes and whoever is paying for them to do this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not their fault. They're the, the women that are doing this. Smart, bro. Are you pay me for me to fart in the microphone? Oh, psh. what? What are you talking about? A hundred dollars just, just an, an hour for farting in a microphone, bro? Hey, give me that. You wanna, you wanna watch me just sit in a hot tub? You gonna pay me a hundred dollars an hour? Give me that. Like what, bro? What? This chick's a smart, bro. It's the, it's the freaking consumers that are idiots. They're the ones that are, they're idiots, bro. Like, I don't know, man. I know Twitch is supposed to be like safe for work and all that type of stuff. But it's just like, ain't really doing nothing wrong, you feel me? You shouldn't get banned and all that. She just like, create a freaking category for them. Give them their category, bro. Give Twitch, make an NSFW category, bro, I guess. Maybe, no. Nah, don't do that. Don't do that. See, this is why I ain't on the board. But, for real though, they ain't doing nothing wrong. Let's get back to the video, bro. Never get any real respect from guys is when I prove I'm actually good at the game we're playing. Not that all guys are like that. I'd actually say that most don't really care that I'm a girl, but when it gets bad, it gets really bad. Uh, same and sometimes, being black, bro. that's all it takes to ruin the same experience. Same with being black. Being completely. a gamer who's black. But there was one incident that occurred Call of Duty while lobbies. I was playing online that put me off gaming entirely for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah real the in story there. Of Twilight <laughs> Zane. Happened to Apex, too, just recently. I met like, Twilight Zane a one night ago. on Sea of Thieves. For those that don't know, Sea of Thieves is an awesome multiplayer game where a crew of two Should to four be, players take control of their very own pirate ship. Is this game good now, bro? I was now, a huge bro? fan of the Disney Pirates franchise when I was a kid. Still am, I suppose. So the idea of a game like that was hugely appealing to me. I had a lot of fun on Sea of Thieves, for a while anyway. Until one night I found myself on a ship with a crew member called Twi'lek Zane. Zane, Twi'lek as Zane. we'll Why call him, was at nice at first. He seemed a little surprised to find himself sailing with a real-life girl. But a lot of people are and just get over it pretty quickly. Zane seemed like one of those guys. Kind of quiet, but perfectly nice otherwise. CJ. He kind of faded into the background for the most part, being overshadowed by much louder, more extroverted crew members that ran around showing off their pet parrots and playing their musical instruments. At one point, after fighting a ship full of skeleton pirates, I needed to regenerate some health. Okay. So I go below deck to our little food barrel and pick out a few pineapples to nom on to get myself back to full strength. I made a remark to the guys about eating all the ship's pineapples and how it was making me hungry in real life. I want to eat all pineapples. They asked what guys. my favorite food was, and my reply is probably in line with like 80% of people everywhere. 
Pizza. Pizza, I told them. <laughs> of course he's going to say that. This sparked off a little debate on ship when one of the crew threw the question out there. You like pineapple on your pizza? How do you feel about pineapple on I pizza? I knew it. <laughs> it's delicious. most of civilized society, I actually kind of liked Hawaiian pizza. Thank I you. I just can't resist the whole sweet and salty thing that it has going on. But when I tell them that, it's delicious. it sparks off something of a mutiny. The two louder crew members start I hate laughing. people like that. It's so annoying, bro. Ship. Ew, you like, you like pineapple on your pizza? Ew, dude. Oh, dude, that's nasty, Dan. Why you eat that, Dan? Like, chill out, bro. Why? <laughs> I mean, that's serious. Saying, stayed quiet, not saying a word as we had our little bit of banter. That boy making some pineapple pizza oh, right now. Minutes go by, and I'm getting hungrier and hungrier, so I tell the guys I'm about to jump off to go make some food and that I'd be back on after work. And then I hear my doorbell. Luckily, my flatmate was home, so... I didn't have Flatmate. to worry about Oh, yeah, you're in, you're in the UK, probably. So I don't really take much notice of the exchange <clears throat> I can hear through my bedroom door. But I did start to take notice when I heard my flatmate's footsteps coming up the stairs to my room. As she opens the door, I slide off my headphones, and there stands my roommate with a pizza box. Bro, her ordered hands. her a pineapple a pizza. I trust my BFF to just know when I was hungry. Or at least, that's what I thought. I was so hungry that I actually cut her IP off and address. asked her if I could have a slice of her pizza, as I was absolutely ravenous. She looks confused, then says she was about to ask me the same thing. I am beyond confused at this point, so I asked the guys on Sea of Thieves to hold on a minute. I mute my mic, then turn back to my friend. My jaw is on the floor by the time she's finished talking. Why? The pizza delivery wasn't for her at all. It was for me. What's more, it had been paid for, and the topping was, you guessed it, oh ham my. and pineapple. I felt sick. I told my friend she could have it, that I wasn't feeling very hungry anymore. In a confused voice, she thanks me and turns to leave, but asks me if I'm feeling okay before she shuts the door. I just lie, straight up lie, and tell her I'm fine. Just a bit under the weather, I suppose. Tell the truth. Be honest. When she shuts the door, I get right back on the PC. It was horrible. I found myself asking a question that I already knew the answer to. Did one of you guys order me food? The first two louder sailors said no, with one actually laughing at what seemed like such a bizarre question. It's all like Zane in the back. Twilight Zane was silent. His character just stood still on deck. Quietly wrong, watching and listening as the situation unfolded. I got that IP address. And then he spoke up. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> is all he said. Really? Enjoy. I freaked out. I pulled the Ethernet cable out of the back of my computer so hard the connection snapped off and remained in the slot. Now look, now you gotta pay money. It was severed. Yeah. That's all that mattered. But it was way too late, and that was the worst thing of all. There was no way for me to know just how much information Zane had acquired just from using my Microsoft ID and IP address. If he managed to work out my home address, what other information had he been able to dredge up? He follows you on Facebook, The only comfort Instagram, I could possibly take in the whole thing all was that snaps. because of his accent, Sending I knew you TikToks. he was North American. But that didn't rule out the possibility that he was either living or studying in the UK and was actually much, much closer than I first thought. I barely slept the week that followed. I like Nightmares your hair. came every single night. That hombre. Nightmares in which I'd wake up to a figure standing over my bed, a crooked smile twisting their lips oh before they God, pounced. Brother. I'd wake up crying, bed sheets soaked in a cold sweat, with my roommate rushing into my room I to see if that I was is okay. Scary. In the end, I told them everything, and they drove Buy me a down gun. to the police station immediately. Well, I don't there know I the laws. An Get a knife. Yeah, because in the UK, y'all have like really strict like gun laws, right? But all they could yeah, do yeah, was tell me to block the person in question knife crimes, right? to possibly avoid the same game as them, but generally to carry on as normal. Get a dog. Basically, there was absolutely nothing they could do. And that's what's so scary. A significant other. That maybe the internet will never be a safe place for girls like me. No matter maybe what like we do. Like a dude in the house. Or maybe a female MMA fighter. people whose predatory attitudes seem to override all normal human feeling. That's crazy. The most terrifying day of my life began early one oh, morning. Oh, this is the next story. Okay. Didn't even give us no intro. I don't want to give away too many details. I don't want the person at fault here to be able to gain any satisfaction from this retelling. So I apologize if I seem overly vague when it comes to describing people or places. 
It all started one afternoon when I decided to unwind after work with some video games. I live with my brother, who finishes his daily shift a few hours after I do. It was his console, so from about 3.30 to 6 p.m. every day, it's crazy. I, I can remember. actually have that thing to myself without playing video games and after, I mean, back in the living room. Call of Duty, which he obsesses over. And when I think back, I'm just like, dang, Driving my parents really let me just more my things, take over the whole supplies, living room and play the game, game bro. And it was my dream to live out in the California coast. So I guess you can call it escape. It's a trash game, bro. What is this? That and the idea of beefing with people over voice chat just didn't appeal to me. But as I came to learn, sometimes it's simply unavoidable. Okay, if you ain't talking nobody, so we just got headphones on for it. Round after round of this particular game, when I started getting griefing messages from some salty moron. They weren't happy that I was using a setup that they called OP and demanded I change my settings to see if I was skilled enough a driver as I thought I was. I sent him back a lull, told him no, and carried on playing. Next round finishes, and this time a flurry of messages start pinging their way towards me at an astonishing rate. Focus on the race, bro. This, this is why you're losing. Using a USB keyboard or whatever, but the grief came thick and fast. At the time, I just thought it was funny how anyone could get so irate over something as small as a video game was beyond me. So, as you can imagine, I just sent a few messages back telling the guy how pathetic I thought he was being. Then, the guy just rage quit, or at least I figured he had. He wasn't in the game anymore, and from what I could tell, he was either offline or had blocked me. But he did send one final message before he did. You deserve what's about to happen. Rest in pieces. Oh, he's going to swat your I house? I have to admit, this did creep me out a little. Although I was mainly but worried about him, like hacking the console or something. Like I said, it was my brother's, and he would not be happy if someone screwed up his COD sessions. However, a few hours go by, there's no problem with the internet connection or the console, so I figured the guy was just full of hot air and was just trying to scare me. And I just sort of forgot about the whole thing. I remember briefly telling my brother about it when he got home, and he thought the whole thing was funny. But other than that, yeah, it just didn't register with me. We had dinner, watched a little TV, shared some He's got a wine bottle? What the f- The usual routine. The next thing I remember was being shaken awake by my brother. There was no light coming through the cracks in the curtain, so I had no idea what was he night it was. But as I'm slowly rousing myself from a deep, dreamless sleep, the fear I heard in his voice had my heart going from zero to sixty. Wake up! There's people trying to break in! He hissed. When I looked, I saw he had his pistol in his hand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was deadly serious. Yes, sir. This was no dumb prank, and I could see from the look in his Gotta eyes that your life, bro. might actually be in danger. Gotta protect your Everything life. Everything was kind of a blur after that. He hadn't called the cops yet. He'd rushed into my room right after he grabbed his gun. His nose so that black. was the first thing I did. I grabbed my phone and immediately called 911. It's in the middle of explaining to the dispatcher that we were in the middle of a home invasion that I heard my brother scream something about the guys outside being armed. They send me into overdrive. I was pleading with the woman on the other end of the line to send help, but when I told her our street address, she seemed to get all cagey. Right when I was panicking the most... She asked me to hold the line. Instead of reassuring me something, anything to let me know the help was on the way, she literally said, Hold the line, please, sir. And then silence. Silence until I heard the shots. Five of them to be exact. Something that's completely burned in my memory. Wait, the what? Pop, 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 pop. That I described to the police over and over again. Then there was screaming. My brother barking at the invaders outside. Oh, he's the one that shot He shot at one of them, and his aim had been true. There was okay. me screaming, too. My sister-in-law was hiding somewhere in the house. Oh, he's got a girl? Wailing with panic now that the shots had been fired. I was so scared I just ran to my closet. Crouched Help down brother fight back, man! I tried to keep as low as possible while staying on the line with the dispatcher, but each second seemed to drag itself out into an eternity as all I could do was wait and listen. Then I heard the words that made my jaw drop, and had me hanging up the phone immediately. This is the police. Put down your weapons to surrender to the officers immediately. Not exactly what was said, but 
I won't reveal exactly that because they used my real name. I remember seeing my brother on the stoop outside. His hands held high in the air as a few extremely bright lights illuminated and blinded him. Wait. I was convinced they were going to kill him. I mean, the shots he'd fired, the ones I thought were aimed at some violent intruder, he'd shot at the freaking cops. Not just shot at them either. He hit one. I know he did. A bunch of so times So he was too. swatted. As far as I was concerned at the time, he'd killed a cop, and how was he not dead himself? They arrested my sister-in-law and I and took us down to the station. I had no idea what was about to unfold. I was convinced my brother was about to get life in prison for killing a cop. But the truth of the matter and how that situation ended was something I never could have expected. We came to find out that my brother was facing absolutely no charges. None. He had fired at a cop and I was right, had in fact hit them, but was still facing no charges. It was all because of that video game I'd been playing. Uh -huh. The salty guy because... who was messaging me had somehow <coughs> found out my idea, <sighs> then used that to pin down my social media details, which he then used to find out my address. Then, he waited until the following morning to you swat know. us, which he did so with horrifying efficiency. Long story short, because the cops hadn't followed protocol and announced themselves properly, my brother had no idea it was them, hence why he opened fire in the first place. The copy shot was wearing a state-of-the-art bulletproof vest, military style with armor plates, each round hit the plate, so other than some bad bruising, the cop was able to walk away. Oh, not that the night wind, was probably the worst experience of my life, but I still play video games. Alright gang, I hope y'all enjoyed tonight's episode of a Scary Movie Night. Make sure you go check out all five of these channels. I will leave the links down in the description. And also, if you enjoy it, why not leave a like? And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And make sure you hit the bell so you're notified when the boy hits, uploads a video. Not hits a video, when I upload a video. But uh, till then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!